I'm Mikel. Um, um, this is it's your first press conference as the Arsenal first team manager. I just wanted to get your reaction to the news and if you could just tell us a bit more about how your role will change from what you were previously head coach. My title is changed a little bit, uh, but I'm just here to try to do my job uh, as good as possible. Um, obviously, it's always nice to be recognised um, from the club for the job that I try to do, but uh, I just want to help the club to do the right things. And when I have to be involved, great. If I can work in any area, great. I just want to bring this club to be the most successful in this country as quick as possible and in a sustainable way. And that's my ambition. I think this is our ambition and, and we have to do it together. We're now sort of almost exactly 24 hours away from kickoff against Fulham. How would you describe Arsenal's summer so far in terms of transfer business, ins and outs? and where you feel the team are in terms of their overall development? Well, a very strange uh, mini pre-season with a lot of uh, external factors difficult to control. I think today is the first day that uh, we have the full squad training together for the pre-season just the day before we play the, the first game. But uh, we've been trying to put the work um, that we needed, uh, obviously without some key players here for different reasons. And uh, towards the market and our squad, uh, obviously we bought um, William and we bought Gabriel, two really good recruitments in my opinion and, and two players that are going to improve our squad, but a very complicated my market so far. Thanks, Mikhail. Thank you. Faye from the Premier League. Hi, Mikhail. Hello. Um, so no David Luiz and no Socrates either. Um, both injured, how's that going to change your plans formation-wise against Fulham? Well, we have a few issues around the squad and that's something normal that we have to try to adapt. Um, we've been trying with the players that we have fit at the moment. It's not ideal to start the season to have some uh, key players out. But uh, again, we have enough players, really good players, and, and tomorrow we will put the best possible plan to try to win our first game. You mentioned Gabrielle and, and Willian. How have they been training and we, are we expected to see them uh, tomorrow starting? They've been training really well. Um, they are adapting quickly. They are really excited to be here with us. Um, really good energy from both of them. Big talent, uh, both in very different phases of their careers. Someone that already very established in the Premier League with an incredible quality. And another one that has to adapt to this league, but it has a huge potential to become a, a key player for us in the future. Just finally, what, what are you expecting from Fulham? You obviously know Scott Parker well from your, your playing days. What are you expecting from his side? Well, I think, it's a, I think the team is a good reflection from, from their coach. Um, a very thorough person, um, a very committed team, a very clear way of playing. He's done a fantastic job of Fulham. The way uh, they managed to get promoted last season, he was uh, really good. So, yeah, we've been watching them. We know it's a very typical stadium, really tight. Uh, it will be tough tomorrow, for sure. Thanks, Mikel. Thank you. Ian at TalkSport. Hi, Mikel. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, I'm going to start off by asking about uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. You were confident last season he was going to sign his contract. We were waiting for news before the cup final, before the Community Shield, now on the eve of the season. Where are we with it? And, and do you actually think it's going to get done? I can say that I am even more confident than I was uh, at the end of last season. When you ask me the same question 10 times. <laughs> I, I'll ask it 11 or 12 times. <laughs> you think it was going to get done very soon then, yeah? I am really optimistic, yes. Okay. Uh, team must be very confident having won the FA Cup and the Community Shield. Just talk to us about what you've seen from the team, from the players, and obviously people like Ainsley Maitland-Niles who this week got an England cap. What I see from them is that uh, they want more. Uh, they are not satisfied. And uh, this is what we want to show tomorrow, that we want to go another step forward. And um, what we've done, it doesn't count on anything. Uh, obviously, it gives us confidence and belief of what we can do and the way we can compete against uh, any team. But this is a 
completely different competition. It's a long race and we have to be consistent. And uh, there is a big gap from what happened in the last few seasons and the reason why we were out of these Champions League spots. And this is our challenge for this season. And finally, obviously, the transfer window goes on for another three or four weeks. Um, your, Amy Martinez has been linked with, with moves away. Um, how hard will it be to keep two very good goalkeepers uh, this season in terms of him and Bert Leno? And what about, obviously, people like Mesut Ozil and Maciej Guendouzi, who didn't feature at all uh, towards the end of the season? Yes, we have some really good players in, in many different positions. That some of them are duplicated and obviously club come to us and they are interested to get our players. It's very difficult to promise um, players game time or, or be the first choice. So it's part of uh, this period in the market. We try to manage the situation as well as we can all the, all the time, counting on what the players' expectations are and what we can achieve with them as a club. And um, we are making decisions toward that. Thanks, Michael. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Jess at Sky. Hi, Mikael. Um, good to see you again. Um, I wondered what were your thoughts on the dropping of the Black Lives Matter logo um, from Premier League signage ahead of the new season? Well, I think it's a cause that has been... It's had a massive impact and we've been very supportive with. I think we have to continue to do that as much as possible every time something's happened in a social um, environment that we can change or we can highlight is our responsibility and I'm really pleased with what we've done so far with that. Do you think any of the players or any of the staff at Arsenal will continue to take a knee? Well, I think it's a, an individual decision, how you feel about it. Um, but I think the way we have conducted is not an individual thing. I like more the collective things and the way we've done it, I think it was really, really well done. Uh, and just finally, Mikel, I wonder if there's any update on uh, Mesut Ozil. And he, he seems to be suggesting that he's ready to play. Is that likely anytime soon? Well, it's not been any updates. All the players that we have available here and they have a contract with the Arsenal Football Club, they've been treating completely the same way. We've all been training. They all put in maximum effort in every, every training session. And this is what I expect from all of them. Thank you, Mikhail. Good luck. Thank you. George at the BBC. Thanks, Mark. Hello, Mikhail. Um, your chief executive yesterday said it was one of Arsenal's toughest periods in the history of the club last season. So I just wonder how pleased are you with the, with the nine months you had in charge of what you've done in that short space of time? Well, I look 10 years older, I think, <laughs> because it has been really challenging. Uh, Obviously, it was my, my first job as a, as a head coach and a lot of things happened, a lot of interruption, a lot of unexpected things. But uh, we all together have uh, been very consistent on what we were trying to achieve. Um, we felt really supportive one with the other. Um, a lot of changes at the club, a lot of changes in our environment. But our idea and our direction is not going to change and, and we are aiming to achieve that. I think that uh, we have uh, created some belief that is uh, really important amongst the players, the staff, and as well our fans. And now what our aim is to continue to do that, keep building, um, keep getting engaged to this process and make it better and better. I think one of the accusations about Arsenal teams in previous years was they always had a weak mentality. Do you think that's fair and do you think that's gone now? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Whether it's going to know is again, we have to show it what we've done in the past few months in football. It doesn't really count. It's about tomorrow, how we start, how ready we look, how committed we are, and how much can we sustain our consistency through the year and to be one of the best teams in this country. Sorry, one last question on you, but should Arsenal fans be worried that it's taken this long? With Ova? Yeah, yeah. I think they can be pretty relaxed. Okay, thank you, thank you. Mark at PA. Hi, Mikael. Um, just to go back on something Ian asked, um, there are reports that uh, Emmy Martinez is set to leave in the coming days. So I just wondered, do you expect him to stay at Arsenal or are those, are those reports accurate? 
Again, I cannot stop uh, all the speculation that we have uh, about all our players coming in and out. I would say I don't want to comment in any individuals at the moment uh, without having the right uh, answer to give. Okay, um, it was a couple of weeks back now, but um, the club announced a few changes to your coaching team. Um, could you tell us why Freddie Jumberg left and if you're looking to make any further appointments? Well, the situation with Freddie was very clear about uh, his ambition and his next step in his career. He's been really supportive for us. He was a person that he was helpful in the first few months to try to understand better the squad and what happened in the past. Obviously, that left a gap that I was to, to get fill in as well. I had some people in mind before I joined that I couldn't bring in and to have some more specificity in our staff to be a little bit more detailed and improve in some key areas, in my opinion, the team can improve. So that's what we brought. And then just finally, um, it's just under two years ago now since Arsenal last played at, at Craven Cottage. Uh, they won 5-1 that day and there were chants from behind the goal of we've got our Arsenal back. Now, I think everyone would agree that that was a little premature. But do you think we're now close to getting the old Arsenal back? I think it's premature as well, depending on how old that Arsenal that we are talking about, uh, for example, the Invincibles. Uh, it's great. We were able to win two trophies. You know, we changed uh, quite a lot of things at the club. Certainly, things look brighter, in my opinion. But uh, it's still a long way to go. The gap that I always talk about is still there. And we have to make sure that uh, we feel that in this season as much as possible. Thanks, Mikel. Uh, Nick from Haters. Hi, Mikhail. Um, this new title of manager, it's been pretty clear from day one that you've been in charge and running things how you want to run them, but now it's very much official. Does that put more pressure on you to succeed this season and deliver that top force place? Well, I think responsibility and pressure is always uh, linked. Um, I'm really grateful for the faith and, and commitment that the club uh, is showing towards me. I'm just trying to do, as I said before, my job as well as possible to bring this club as quick as possible and the most eff efficient way uh, back to the top in a sustainable way. This is my aim. And the players and the people working in this organization enjoy. They feel really connected to this football club. The same with our fans. And... Um, Whatever I have to do in order to achieve that, I will put all the hours on my commitment and passion to, to achieve that as quick as possible. You're starting from a level playing field this time, not inheriting somebody else's team. Does that um, sort of put more expectation on you? Do you think people will be expecting more of Arsenal this season? Well, every new season, I think, brings uh, new expectations. I think, obviously, the fact uh, the way we end up last season and the way we started this one with that title, obviously and people want to see more and more and more and this is a really positive sign we want that type of energy to drive our team forward and um, and tomorrow we have a great test at Fulham very English stadium a new promoted team that they will be completely ready and focused to try to beat us just just finally for me and I know you don't want to talk about transfers but can we expect whoever starts in goal tomorrow to be your number one for the, seeing, for the season, for the foreseeable future? No, I don't treat the goalkeeping position any differently to any others. I think the one that is better, that, um, that in my opinion is training better with the goalkeeping coach, uh, has the, most, the better chance to, to start tomorrow and my decision will be like that consistent throughout the, the season. And then whoever starts where it's their position to lose, I presume? Sorry? Whoever starts then tomorrow will be their position to lose. Exactly. On the and the other one to push him and try to make him better and be ready because when he chance come, be ready and, and help the team as, as they both did that last year. Both were fantastic, in my opinion. Okay, good luck. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Charles, a goal. Hi, Mikhail. Hi. I just wanted to talk about um, Alexander Lacazette. Um, you said towards the end of last season that you needed to have a conversation with him and see how both the club and he saw his future has that conversation happened now and what's what is the state of play with Laka? that he is really happy here that um, that he wants to keep improving and contributing to the team i know how good he is the impact he's having 
he knows about the competition he has as well uh, with the front players. So again, he needs to demand himself and to be the best striker at this football club, the same as the rest. And uh, he was very happy to hear that. And the way he's been training and conducting has been excellent. So d does that mean that he's he's told you that he would he would sort of like to like to stay because he's obviously only got less than two years left of his contract now. Yes, I think he's very happy here. That's my feeling and what I got from that conversation. Just on, on Matteo, um, see, we saw he's back in training now, which wasn't the case last season. He said that the situation hadn't changed. The, the fact that he's back in training, does that mean the situation with him has changed now and that something's happened? No, Matteo has been training like any other player in the squad. Um, obviously, it's a new season. Uh, time is over and we had some really positive conversation between both parties. And now he's back with the group, he's training, he's been training really well. He went to France to play with the under 21s uh, last week. He played really well again and, and he's here. We know the club have been potentially looking to move him on. Janino at Lyon publicly said that he was offered in a possible swap deal with Husim Awa. So knowing that, I mean, can he be fully focused knowing that the club are potentially looking to move him, move him out? I don't know. I'm not going to discuss uh, here what uh, the things that happen internally, but uh, a lot of things that they've been writing, I'm telling you, they are not true. But just lastly on Arwa, I know you don't want to talk about other players, but as Janino has publicly declared Arsenal's interest in him, are you hoping that is a transfer that could still potentially happen this summer? Again, I don't want to talk about players at other clubs that they, they are not uh, our football club at the moment. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you. James at ESPN. Hi, Mikel. <clears throat> Just a general one, really, on a similar theme. Um, are you happy with the state of the squads in terms of incomings if you don't get anyone else in? Or, or are you looking generally to at least bring in one more or two more bodies? We're still active in the market. Uh, we are looking at different options. And I would say we are active in the market uh, with players in and out. At the moment, the, the squad balance is not... Uh, the ideal and what we wanted to achieve. So there is still some work to do, but we have to bear in mind uh, the complication with these transfer markets, um, the complexity and as well the timings, because you can see that clubs are behaving in, in many different ways and it's a little bit uncertain how this is going to evolve in the next few weeks. In what way do you feel the squad's a bit imbalanced? First of all, number-wise, some of positions are... Uh, Overbooked, I said, uh, some others in terms of the specific qualities that we need there, um, they are still not there. But uh, it's going to be very difficult to achieve what we want as well in one window or two windows. You know, it's a process and it has to be evolved. And most importantly, it has to be a sustainable model that we can consistently fit in as well, of course, using our academy plays. Do you feel then, given that, it's going to be, it is going to be a while before this feels like your squad? I know you've obviously been there a while, but are you going to need maybe two or three or four windows before you actually get the, the squad to be sort of Mikel Arteta's squad, if you like? I think so, but uh, that's always the case. And then there are some, all the time, really positive surprises with people that uh, gives you a much positive impression that's uh, what you thought and as well some, someone that is uh, a more negative one. So it's a constant evolution. It has to be assessed all the time and you need to have a very clear direction what you want to achieve and what is your ideal. And once you have that, even then you can stop and you have to be fitting it all the time.